Hi, everyone. Welcome to Amy's Knit Lab. My name is Amy Gilles, and I am the owner and creative director of La Bien Aimée based here in Paris, France. This is my YouTube channel where I talk about all things yarn related, LBA related, and things related to um, designs coming out of the Amy's Knit Lab. And I'm also taking this opportunity to have special conversations with the designers that I worked with for my new book, Neons and Neutrals. Today, we have two special guests joining us. We have Layla Yang and Florence Sperling, and we're going to have a nice conversation with them. But before we get into that conversation, I'd like to introduce my co-host, Julia Taylor. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Julia works here as a communications assistant at La Bien Aimée. Um, and we are going to get started on our conversation with the designers. But first, I just wanted to ask Julia, what are you knitting, Julia? I'm knitting Le Bandana. I'm knitting La Bandana too. <laughs> <laughs> so we've just been knitting tons of bandanas. I think yeah. so. This is my third. Um, but I have more plans for the others. <laughs> Amy, I don't know. Is this your eighth? I don't know. Maybe I'm starting. Well, this one I just started last night. Um, I left my knitting at the office and my daughter wanted to watch Indiana Jones and I didn't have anything to knit. So I just cast on another one. And so I'm just playing around with some intarsia shapes inside this bandana and having a lot of fun. Um, this is a pattern that I released. By the time this episode comes out, it will have already released in June. Um, this is called Le Bandana by Amy Gilles, and it's available on Ravelry and on our website. So let's get started with our special conversations with Yay. Layla Yang and um, Florence Sperling. Our, we're gonna start with Layla. So let me go ahead and bring her forward. There we go. Hi, Layla. Hello. Hi. Hi, Amy. Hi, Julia. Hi, Layla. How are you doing? Doing great. <laughs> great. Hey, guys. We're good. It's hot in Paris. This is about as much knitwear as I can manage wearing, and I can only wear it inside with the air conditioning. So I have um, a mini fan on my desk right next to me. <laughs> yeah, it's quite quite similar here in London. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Oh, Summer's okay. definitely here in Europe. So, so Layla and I had a chance to work together for Zao Mai, which you guys can see right here behind me. I've got two samples here, and here's a co close up of the swatch that Layla sent to us early on in the in the kind of the concept of the book, and we were working together. Um, I was really excited to collaborate with Layla on this project because, first of all, she's a yarn maker as well. And I really admire her work. And for her to submit a design too, I was just like, yay, this is exciting. Um, I was wanting to bring Layla onto the YouTube channel so that we could all get to know each other a little bit better. So Layla, could you please introduce yourself and tell us about your background? Yeah, so my name is Layla and I'm the founder of Chin Fiber and the Chin Studio. So I'm basically a yarn dyer designer and I'm a knitter as well. So I've been knitting for many years now. I have a passion for designing unique patterns that can blend traditional styles with some modern elements. And I like to blend different uh, weight of yarn and colors to create interesting textures. Amazing, amazing. I discovered your yarn, gosh, when was it? We met that year at Edinburgh Yarn Festival. It was like 2000. 16 yeah. was that yeah. right 2015 or 16 yeah yeah and then I discovered your yarn after that and I just love everything that you do um I love the way you put your colors together I love the name the names for your colorways and everything like that and so for you to have to make your design submission for Zao Mai I was just so excited to include you in this project um for those of you who are not familiar this is the design that she submitted for neons and neutrals. Um, can you tell us a little bit about like how you go about with your design inspiration in general? Like, do you, are you inspired by a shape or do you get inspired by the yarn or like, how does that work for you? Well, I, I would say the inspiration came from every every sort of thing. So, but for the for the tell my cardigan design, I was uh, basically inspired by the by Amy's book title name. It's called Neons and Neutral, and I immediately think of combining different colors and texture of yarn to be used in this book. And 
so yeah i so so i wanted to create something that's uh, both elegant and comfortable to wear as well so i used the the suri and the pearl to create a really soft and lightweight garment as a background and then there's uh, amy's really colorful neon happy colors <laughs> and the chunky stitch to decorate the the background fabric yeah and just oh, using yeah. the difference between the alpaca because the the chunky stitch is used with a pure wool there's just like, such a great texture play happening mm -hmm. between the two stitches um i really i really really love that um I wanted to also ask you a specific question as a dyer. How do you draw inspiration for your the colorways that you dye? Um, so basically, so we work from a concept first. So every season for, for example, summer. So we think of a topic, um, something like a, a flower or garment, a garden or something that's really interested us. And then we de develop something like a mood board together. And then we get a basic idea of what kind of uh, art direction we want to go with that collection and then starting to test colors based on that idea. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So the idea for Zhao Mai, um, as I was told, this was a cardigan that was developed by you. But you work on this pattern with um, another member of the Ching studio team um, named Sophie, which was an inspiration off of the parquet jumper, which we've seen release now. Um, how do you guys work together in this collective, this Ching studio team? Yeah, so we would like to encourage creative projects in the studio. So whenever we had the chance, we will just work together on something new and exciting. So basically all of the parts patterns released by our studio are designed by our team members in the studio. So like whatever they are, like if they're dyers or they just work in the admin team, but they will just come up with ideas and we encourage them to develop that into something. Oh, I love that. I feel like we should do this at LVA. This is such a great idea. That's so inspiring. Sounds yes. so yeah. amazing. Yeah, absolutely. We yeah. had yarn like surrounding, so we always kind of sort of I mean there's no shortage of yarn. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Let's talk about specifically your inspiration for Zhao Mai. Like where does the name, what does the name mean and where does it come from? Oh, so so Zhao Mai is a uh, Chinese. In Chinese, it's actually uh, some sort of wheat. Yeah, and I see the tip here. Yeah, so you can see the deep stitch, the shape is yeah. kind of uh, a kind of like a V V shape. And then because we're using quite a lot of uh, strands of yarn together to knit this, so it kind of looks really 3D and like a wheat, like just like the plant itself. So yeah, it's really beautiful imagery with the name. Um, while I was on tour, many... Chinese speaking knitters would come up and say like, oh, I love the name for this cardigan because it's it's yeah. immediately evocative of the shape of the chunky stitch and things like that. So that's great. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you if you had a chance to knit something from neons and neutrals other than your pattern, which one would it be? Well, I absolutely love a lot of them in the book. Oh. So for example, the punks by Julia Wilkins. Yeah. The rule. Yeah. by Frozen Spelling and then Data by Ines Sun. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of them, but these these feel are like uh, really caught my eyes and mm. uh, I mean the combination of color work, the textures and the shape really, really, really interesting. Um I think maybe 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 data would be a fun project to start because it looks quite challenging. The little frill designs in the in the you know it looks harder than it is and the designers made a really cool video on how to pick up the the stitches for the frill and it's actually really quite simple so and just super fun i mean yeah so much fun so easy at the same time and just but it's so so striking visually like the the difficulty of it um compared to the result you get is really um incredible yeah, it looks really cute. It's it fun. would be cute to see a Qing, uh, a Qing fiber yes. version. Of, I can uh, see Qing so fiber. many Qing colors that would look amazing for the raffles. 
Yeah, yeah, I can imagine a lot of like lace weight yarn to be used for that. Uh, yeah. yeah. In my second sample of Xiao Mai, I used one strand of Qing fiber, which was the base color that I built around. Um, Julie, what's the name of this base? It's like gone out of Ametrine. Yeah, Ametrine. It's that pink. It's hard to see because I built around seven strands of mohair silk around it to bring that pink out of that color because I, I was like obsessed with that color. And I had two skeins in my stash, which was just perfect for making this chunky stitch right here. Um, yeah, I just wanted to show that and say that. Um, <laughs> that a really beautiful color combination. Um, I have a few swatches as well. Oh my gosh. Oh. That's beautiful. These are also something that's in my stash. Um, I just used a really lightweight yarn like Suri and the Pearl as background and then Chunky as the Chunky stitch, just one strand. So, oh my gosh, is that one strand of your bulky weight um, yarn? Yeah, That's just incredible. We should do some swatches like that. Yes, That's absolutely. Really Imagine the big merino. Yeah, we have a bulky And weight. I love that you did a gradient of color. Very nice. Very nice. One of the things I really love about Xiaomai is the um, you made the, the chunky stitch out of lace weight. So it's really thin yarn, but because you hold eight strands together, it creates a chunky stitch, which is really fun. But that chunky stitch you can actually make out of as many or as few strands of yarn as you want. Yeah, absolutely. So I was wondering if you could tell us about some of the projects that you're working on or anything like a new project, or maybe you want to sneak peek something for us. Um, yeah, I guess so. So it's actually I'm working on something for summer at the moment. It's um which I can show you. It's actually it's something it's not a pattern, it's just for myself. <laughs> <laughs> well that's good too. <laughs> I'm blending um crochet and knitting skills. So these are some uh, crochet flowers. Oh cute. Um, I'm I'm just using the Vernita yarn. You can see it's actually a really lightweight. It's a lace weight. Yes. But I'm using big hook, like a five point five millimeters hook, to make these flowers to make them look really fluffy. That's very cool. I'm thinking to just sew them on something, knitted. Absolutely. That would yes. be cute. Like I could even just sew one right onto my little collar right here. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Right here. <laughs> Like, um, like little earrings yes adorable. yes adorable a little barrette yeah yeah so this is something i'm currently working on very oh, cool very cool see it come out really <laughs> thanks for sharing um please tell us where we can find you on the internet where would be the best place to follow your work and maybe get in touch with you yeah you can find our um, patterns on chingfiber.com um, if you are interested in the yarn and uh, how the the yarn knit up, you can find our updates on the Instagram account called Chin Fiber. And if you're just uh, interested in the design part, you can find us on the Chin Studio account. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Everything is awesome. linked here. Yeah, we will link to everything. And I follow all those accounts and I find daily inspiration from what you guys are doing over there. So please keep it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Layla. Um, we're now we're gonna bring forward um Florence. Okay. Hi, Florence. Hi there. Hi. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So Florence is the designer for Ferule, which is here you can see behind me um hanging up and on the mannequin. And I have this is what the pattern looks like in the book here it's, it's really beautiful intarsia sweater um i was really excited to work with florence because she's a designer that i've kind of followed online for the last couple years before neons and neutrals and i just really love everything that she does lots of beautiful texture play intarsia which is something that i've recently become very obsessed with and i have to say florence you kind of brought intarsia back onto my radar when i started <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Really love, <laughs> I really love the orange. Sure. Yeah, I think we. I mean, I feel like I want to push everyone towards intarsia. Yeah. It's really fun. And you do. Say again. And you do. 
<laughs> you push everyone do, towards Intarja. <laughs> every, I talked about, about it with everyone. But what I loved mostly about your Intarja, that when I discovered you, I just loved the organic feel that I felt. I think it was about the time that you were making these like, it seemed like abstract shapes but maybe it was maybe they were flowers but it just seemed like beautiful against a very thin background with a thicker yarn and I was just like really obsessed and that was kind of like the first time I had ever seen that before so when I made the the call for submissions for the book I was so excited to see that you had submitted because I was like yeah <laughs> together um and she brought together the design for February so here's the swatch for the yellow version that you see in the book that I'm wearing um lots of things are going on in this design and I'm going to let Florence tell us about this in a little bit later but I would love for you Florence to introduce yourself to our audience um tell us a little bit about your background sure yeah so I'm Florence um currently based in London in my studio um, I have a, a textile design background, so I've always loved textiles for as long as I can remember. I've always loved kind of fabric and pattern and things like that. Um, so I studied textiles in London. I did a undergraduate and a master's degree. Um, and I really kind of like honed into the knitwear side of things. So I studied knitted textiles specifically. Um, and that gave me like a really great um, kind of range of like machine knitting, crochet, like all those different sort of construction methods. Um, and then when I graduated from my MA, I actually moved to Philadelphia in the US um, as I had got a job offer at Anthropology and the headquarters are there. Um, so I was in the sweater design team um, for a little bit there and had some great experience of kind of how things like that work in a big company. Um, and then after that, I decided I wanted to kind of pursue more sort of freelance type of work. So I actually moved to New York um, and I was there up until recently. So I was in the U.S. about eight years. Um, and then then that's when I started kind of designing under my own name, doing freelance work for um, other designers and then also doing lots of teaching. So I was teaching at um, Parsons and Pratt and FIT. Um, and that was great experience as well for just like expanding my skills too when you're sort of having to learn things to teach other people. That's incredible. So all of this, like, what do you bring from the fashion industry into your hand knit wear design um, work? Um, I think that, I mean, I find that with knitwear, it's kind of the perfect marriage of creativity and technical, and you can't do one without the other. So you can have fantastic ideas, but if you don't have the technical know-how, then it's it's pretty hard to to kind of commit to them. But equally, there's kind of a finite number of techniques, so it takes creativity to kind of push them. So I think that that is, um, that was something that I, I learned a lot working in the more sort of fashion side of things. So kind of being presented with a picture and then having to figure out how to knit something. So I think getting kind of deep into the technical side of like counting stitches in a photo of something you've been given and then figuring out what are the techniques I can do to kind of replicate this or how do I like scale this in a certain way and things like that and it's also very intense deadlines and you know so yeah. it's kind of it's it's good practice I think to just sort of um fuel your work and um yeah just sort of a good sort of technical experience I think that's that's incredibly insightful and interesting. I I feel like we could hold a whole episode on to talk about <laughs> that. But I do want to talk about your design inspiration for Ferrule. If you could talk to us a little bit about how you got inspired for the design for this sweater. Let me just show it again here like that. Um, yes. Um, yeah, so the, the there was a, a design mood board that um that you put together and um there was a, a particular image that was kind of a sort of abstract 
it's um, almost checked uh, brushstroke type image. And so that was my starting point. Um, and I just really loved the kind of the overlay of quite similar colors, but how you kind of have this sort of overshadowing and overlaying and it sort of builds up this quite interesting sort of texture and dimension. Yeah. So I started playing around with um, combining different ends of yarn to create similar tones of colors, but all within a similar family. So using um, three different ends of yarn, but then sort of just interchanging one at a time and all the yarns are quite fine. So it's quite a subtle effect. And then to sort of create that um, kind of rectangular brush stroke effect, then I was playing around with um, also using Intarsia. So that allows um, you to kind of create these different blocks of color. And then there's also a mix of stitches. So you've got stockingette stitch, you've got some moss stitch, um, and those kind of alternate in the, the checkerboard effect. And then you've got garter stitch in between, which kind of reminded me of that sort of brush stroke kind of faded aspect. So that was, that was how it all sort of came together. I love the subtle texture play on this. I think this is something that people really remark on when they see the sample in person. It's hard to kind of see it in the photos because it's so 2D. Yeah. But when you see it in person and you can actually feel the actual texture play that's happening between the stitches is really incredible. Nice. Um, so like based off of your example, so when I started to think about the second sample I wanted, I knew I wanted to mix yellow and pink. And so this is kind of how I landed on this. I swatched for a few days to figure out how my balance of colors were going to be. But there's something to be said about the texture. It really does help really delineate the shapes and stuff mm. and this intarsia is really easy and this yes. is what I tell people all the time I'm like if this is the intarsia you're going to do first I didn't weave my ends in just to show people like, <laughs> because the, this they sometimes people don't understand exactly what intarsia is and I say to them like you are not carrying the yarn behind you're actually creating this fabric that's very lightweight but doing color work and I think one of the first lessons that I ever had in intarsia was just knitting like a black and white checkerboard thing just to practice you know yeah Yes, it's, it's kind of one of the simplest um, like patterns, um, compositions that you can you can knit with a technique. So it's a it's a great intarsia beginner pattern um, if you've never tried it. Yeah, just wanted to show you another swatch that we've made recently that we're going to be talking about on our blog. This was knit by, for us by Jake, who used to work at Levine. He no longer works for us, but he still knits with us and this is his version of Feru that he will be making for himself um, I mean the color combinations are so endless for this because you are holding mm -hmm. like you said three strands three ends together and you can really play around with the marling do you have any tips for people starting out with intarsia like any advice that you'd like to give people yeah I think um it's kind of it's the crux of the technique is very, very simple. The only thing that makes it more challenging or time consuming is when you have lots of different yarn. So um, if you are doing a project where you do have lots of different yarn, I always think it's a good idea to work at a table <laughs> if you can, um, or if you want to do it on the sofa or be a bit mobile, you can use trays or little bowls to keep the yarn in place. Um, so I think it's kind of 99% about just keeping your yarn organized and then you have to be proactive with organizing the yarn. So the technique is crossing the yarns. That's what's kind of creating a continuous fabric without the little holes in. Um, so you just have to bear in mind that you have to uncross them every sort of two rows or something. So it's just a little, it's, it's a little more time consuming, um, but it's just one of those techniques that you can just sort of get into and enjoy. And you do get into the flow of it fairly quickly. So you can quite easily do it watching TV or listening to a podcast or something like that. Cause you do sort of, you get into the rhythm once you've, once you've kind of worked the pattern for a few rows. I love, <clears throat> I love that advice about knitting at the table. I already like knitting at the table for me. I have better posture when I knit anyways. Yeah. 
funny thing is there's this lady that I met on tour and I kind of posted about her in my story. She knits at the table too, but she also puts all of her yarn on a tray so that she can pick it up and go to a new table. Yeah. <laughs> actually takes it with her to knit night just like that. And she came to the event and we were having like a brunch and she had it at the table and she was <laughs> and another woman was telling me that she has a lazy Susan. So do you know what that is? It's like a little round thing. Yeah. You put your condiments on it and spin. And she actually sets up her intarsia on the lazy Susan. <laughs> and so I, I told her, I was like, I am like imagining this in my mind. So I have to like try this out on the table yeah. while she's knitting. So I was like, I think we need to talk about all the advice and all the tips for intarsia to get people. That's to a knit. great one. Yeah. I think there's nothing to be scared about in Tarja. I actually find it easier. I have better tension when I knit in Tarja than I do when I knit color work, you know? Um, yeah. You know, and I don't, you don't have to worry about carrying the floats and everything like that. And so I'm all about getting everyone to knit in Tarja. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you could knit one design from neons and neutrals, which one would it be? Well, I, of course I love um, Layla's design. I've never tried that stitch before and it looks like it's um, very satisfying to work and um, so much opportunity to, you know, I love like mixing all the different yarns together. So that definitely looks like a lot of fun, um, something I'd love to try. Um, but I also, I really love um, Anna's work as well, um, who designed the the Molig um, hat, with the yeah. Intarsia, of course. Oh, um, yeah, that looks like a great sort of palette cleanser project, something that would be a good sort of summer vacation um, type of thing. So yeah, that would be a fun it's one intarsia. to make. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but it's great. Okay. It's Intarsia in the round though. Yeah, yeah. that's different than... Yes. Um, the ferrule. So a lot of people who ask like, which one should I attack? I always say do ferrule first. I think yeah. that would be a really good one. Actually, there's another pattern in Neons and Neutral called Punked um, yes. by Julie yeah, Wilkins, where line. she does yeah. Lazy Tarja, which is actually kind of a great introduction to the concept of tar in Tarja too. Yeah. 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 All right. So are you working on any new projects or anything that you can sneak peek with us? Yes, I am. I, I have a couple of new things here. Um, I have one piece. This is um, called the Lyco sweater. So this is currently being test knit. Um, it should be out. Um, the pattern will be ready by the time that this this video goes out. Um, so it's a top down tee. You can make it with long sleeves too, if you like. And it uses um, like this sort of inlay kind of woven technique. Um, and then I have another piece which still has a lot of ends all mm. added to it. Um, but this is using intarsia and stranded knitting. Um, on the back, it's just stranded knitting but it's just a um, kind of like a sleeveless sort of slip over. Um, and this is using the Mayak yarn. Beautiful. I love yeah. the slip over sleeveless vest movement that's happening right now. Yeah. Let's make more of those. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you tell us where we can find you on the internet so that we can follow your work? Yep. So um, my website is florenceferling.com. Um, all my patterns are on Ravelry and on shopflorenceferling.com. And then on Instagram, I am Florence Sperling Studio. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Florence. It was nice chatting with you. Yeah, you too. So I've just brought forward Beth Abrams and Sophie Graney. Is that right? Did I get your last name right? Yeah, well, um, welcome. And I'm going to let Julia take over this segment <laughs> for the interviews. So hi, both of you. It's so nice to meet you, actually. I mean, we've been corresponding, but uh, we are seeing each other. And I'm going to start with Sophie. Um, so Sophie, we know you're a part of the Ching Studio Design Collective. Um, but could you please just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about you? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm Sophie. Um, I'm the production manager for um, King Fiber. Um, so I spend most of my role um, 
working on the in the dye team actually um and then i do knitting patterns as well when we've got more sort of downtime and quieter periods so most of my time at the moment is working with color helping Lay layla design um, new collections um training up our new dyers um that sort of thing um i began knitting well, my mum taught me to knit probably when I was too young. Um, it was one of those moments where mm. you see it happening and you want to do it. Um, so, yeah, I was probably about four when I started knitting. And then um, I got into it properly as a teenager. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, since then, I've sort of, I do lots of different textile techniques. Um, I am trained as a woven textile designer. So I do that alongside um, working for Layla. Um, so a lot of sort of my inspiration and um, techniques are kind of link between weaving and knitting. There's quite a few crossovers, um, which you might see in the parquet jumper. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, just the the dip stitch uh, that's used in Xiaomai that was inspired by one of your designs, the parquet jumper. And it's absolutely true that you can tell you you weave kind of you weave in that chunky stitch over the main fabric yeah. um it's knit in a really simple way but it is so so effective visually and now that you talk about your background it makes complete sense yeah um so i you look a lot of at, sorry look a lot at repeated lines as well so you can see using the multiple strands um looking at how different materials work together is something I'm really interested in through my weaving and and in knitting as well That's yeah nice. there's such a um an amazing play of textures as well um with the different chains that I used and yeah um, so can you tell us a little bit about how you started working um, with Leila? Yeah, sure. So I started off as one of the dyers. Um, so that was about four and a half years ago. Um, so I've sort of learned all the colorways, learned all the dye techniques. Um, and then when um, Leila started Ching Studio, um, we started getting into doing some of the designs as well. Um, so my background in like weaving and other like sort of studying textiles um, made me really excited about um, doing the knitting patterns. I find it quite quite challenging in like a really satisfying way, um, like all the maths. Um, so I'm used to sort of... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing because I can't imagine anything worse. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those sort of love-hate things. Um, Absolutely. Very satisfying once it's once it's done I guess it's a bit like weaving it's very mathematical it's very technical you have to sort of plan ahead um be quite good with the numbers to make sure it's going to um work um mm. so so yeah so um I can't lost where I was um so yeah that's sort of how I became um started working with Layla and mm. um sort of started doing some of the knitting designs as well mm. Okay, and so um, um, can you tell us a little bit about what you've been working on recently? Is there anything you would like to to show us in your in your knitting? Um, so or design. Design. Um, so I can show you one of our other parquet jumpers I have here. Um, oh, yes, is sim very similar to the um Jaume oh. plugin. So this is using pearl and suri for the base. And then we've got lots of different um, colors here, which is in Ford, which is one of the um, Ching Fiber yarns. Um, so I guess this is a really nice example of, I didn't knit this, one of our test knitters did, but I've just got this to show you. Um, the different textures and the different colors, um, sort of different options you can do for this stitch. Um, this is quite a lot lighter weight. I was quite um, surprised when I was sort of holding it. It's very lightweight compared to some of the other designs we've got. Um, I am knitting one myself now, finally. Um, wow. So yeah. uh, and it's in one of our Clementina bundles, which you can find on um, uh, Ching Fiber. So it's like a nice orangey, peachy tone. Um, so this has got mohair, veronita, um, cashmere, 
um, and then I think two lambs wool yarns as well. So lo lots going on. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of what I'm working on at the moment. Um, I also have, it's really, well, that's my complicated concentrating um, work. <laughs> also, um, recently casted on the ribbed raglan by um, Anne Bensel. Bensel? So I've just done the ribbing of that, but that's that's my TV knitting that I've got ah. here. <laughs> nice. That's super. The um, I love the light background you chose for your parquet, yeah. um, because it's gonna make um all the other colors, the dip stitch, just pop. Yeah, I really wasn't sure, but um, Layla did one of the samples in this in this um bundle, and I thought the white sort of really pale background looked really good. So well, yes, well. absolutely, I love it. Thank you so much, Sophie, for being with us. It was super interesting to talk to you. <laughs> and now I'm gonna talk to Beth, who was a test knitter for Ferrul. Hi, Beth. So you're joining us from California. Yes, I live in Los Angeles. It must be really it's... early for you. <laughs> this it's is early, recorded, but, I... but it's afternoon here in Paris, so it must be very early for you. <laughs> it's early, but I have my coffee and. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was happy to join you. I usually uh, get up pretty early anyway, because I have to get my kids off to camp or okay. school. Or, but yeah. <laughs> well, th thank you so much for being with us. And so um, can you please introduce yourself and tell us uh, who taught you to knit? Yeah. So my name is Beth and I live in Los Angeles. Um, I I like to say I learned by necessity because my kids were taught how to knit when they were in elementary school. And if anyone's ever had this pleasure, they will come home with a tangled mess of drop stitches and <laughs> and say, mom, fix this. So I, I learned how um, my best friend was a knitter and she kind of taught me the basics. And um, I did take some knitting classes at my local yarn store where, you know, you would, they would cast on a project and you would go in and, um, and basically try to complete the project. I wasn't very good at completing my projects. I started a lot of them. Um, and I feel I like I'm talking to a kindred spirit, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, that and, um, but during the pandemic, I just uh, decided to sign up for a virtual knitting class through Vogue Knitting Live. And that's where I was introduced to the world of knitting, uh, really, I think. Yeah. and Instagram. And uh, through that, I met all these amazing designers. Um, and I started test knitting because I took a class from a designer, Sheena Billow. And she was saying she needed people to test knit her new sweater. And I thought, I could do that. <laughs> and I, I tried to and I, I loved it. And then I met yarn vendors through Vogue Knitting Marketplace, like Rebecca from Clinton Hill Cashmere. Mm -hmm. And then she posted that a designer named Florence Sperling was designing a shawl in her yarn. And so I I messaged both of them and I said, I have to, I love this yarn. I, I have to knit this <laughs> design. And so that's how I met Florence. And I, I just sort of fell into it. You know, I wasn't, you know, an expert knitter by any means, but I've learn so much and also for my personality Julia I'm sure you may feel the same way when I have a deadline I actually finish my work <laughs> and it's good for I will me, say you know? yes and, and nothing else <laughs> okay <laughs> but I feel you know I feel like I have an obligation um, mm. and I, I try and do my best I, it, it, sometimes there's circumstances outside one's control but generally I do finish um when I do when I commit to test knitting a project actually I agree with you I think having uh constraints really helps channel you know I um I think it's you you get distracted and excited by you know new things and new ideas and you just have to cast on immediately right but when you have some constraints whether it's time you know deadlines and stuff it's true that it really helps to fo keep you focused I mean it helps me um so that's true so yeah test knitting may be a really good you know a good way to stay focused <laughs> stay on track 
<laughs> exactly. Exactly mm-hmm. how I do it. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, I met Florence through testing um, the shawl. My gosh, I've blanked on the name of it. I made it. It was a beautiful cashmere shawl that I gave to my mother for her 80th birthday. Um, but I, and uh, she said that she was uh, submitting a design or she had a design in a new book. And, um, you know, and she asked if people could test it. And I was like, oh, how exciting. And so I signed up to do it. And it was my first real intarsia project. Um, and, um, it was very challenging, but so rewarding. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I just, I'm going to show my mm-hmm. sweater. It's too warm. Yes, here. please. Yes, yes, <laughs> but yes. But here is my ferrule mm-hmm. and, um, I knit it actually in mostly all, um, Helix and Felix and mm-hmm. so the silk mohair. And I love blues and grays. And, um, so I used, it's very interesting because um and here's the I love the sleeve I don't know oh, it's so hard to show this way I wish I was mm. it's it's I, okay um, yeah we will link to your project on Ravonry yes and if people have any questions they can absolutely uh reach out to us and you know we'll, we'll post about it all the info will be there um I am um... I did include really detailed notes because I wanted to show, explain to people like how much time went into the planning of the project. Um, And I uh, like, okay, so I, I pin these all on one of my blocking mats, but I made all these micro swatches. Amy made made lots of them as well. Um, You call them color chips, right? Knit chips. Yeah. The chips. <laughs> and you know, it's funny because it was like, I don't know if you had this experience in me, but the colors I thought I would like and would go really yes. well together, I didn't. And Absolutely. Uh, yes. yeah. <laughs> and I ended up like all my base yarns were your beautiful grays. And the blues came into my sweater just from the mohair. So wow. it's just very interesting how it turned out. And then I had the extra bonus of my husband had a work trip. Um in London around the time I was swatching. So I brought all my little micro swatches <laughs> to London and I met Florence in her studio and she actually <laughs> helped me pick what colors to use. So that was very fun. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, um, it's like and... the planning of the project is almost as much fun as, you know, knitting it. <laughs> this is what I tell people I... all the time. They have to, I love swatching because for me, that's part of the process of knitting it. I love putting all the colors together. And I love what you said, Beth, about how we have an idea in our mind that we think it's going to look like this, but then when we actually knit it, we're like, oh, wait a minute, that's not right. <laughs> you know, because like you said, the mohair silk has a different dimension. It has a different level of color than the wool lace and things like that. And so it's swatching is a great process. I, I That's another thing I want people to embrace too, is like, just watch before getting going, you know, it, it can offer some reassurance too, before you actually dig into the big project, you know? So yeah. 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 And I mean, I love the way my sweater turned out. It's a, it's a pieced sweater. So it's, it's yeah. actually a great first intarsia project um, yeah. for somebody. Um, all my friends always think I'm crazy when I embark on these intarsia projects, but <laughs> I, you know, I, um, I, I, I say you've got to embrace the tangle, right. And you can <laughs> <laughs> let your yarns fall into major disrepair and they will always untangle. Um, I'm actually knitting another one of Florence's um, intarsia projects, uh, a recently released pattern I wanted to show you all. Um, and I have my yarn in a bowl. <laughs> <laughs> but it, this is her floral mini shawl. It's so oh, pretty. Cute. I know. And I, it's like as, as it gets bigger, the pattern's coming out more and more. Oh, my gosh. This is just a gorgeous project. But, yeah, it's, it's a mess in the back, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and you... You just have to live with it, right? <laughs> embrace exactly it. Embrace, you have to embrace the tangle. And also like, I've also kind of, when I use non-superwash yarns, I don't, you just probably saw me winding a little tiny bobbin, but sometimes I just pull off two meters and just cut it and just leave it because non-superwash yarns, you can spit splice them back together again when you need a little yes. bit more yarn, you know? So oh, that's such a good point. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it Cafe uh, Fawcett who says that, that he just cuts yes, um absolutely yeah and I I took some sort of color work class with him or listened to a lecture and I remember that advice all the time I mean when I knit the for rule I just ro- you know rolled up these little balls of the mar- mm. different marls um that's a great and, idea uh, a great tip. yeah so I had lots of little 
little balls hanging. I know that lots of people make those butterfly bobbins. I don't even bother. I just, mm. <laughs> I just have a huge just... mess. It's like what Florence said. Like I sit <laughs> yes. at the table. Yes. And this, mm. this is like my current like project bag. It's like a little packing tube. You can see all my yarn in here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, most out. of it. <laughs> And I just like throw my project in there and I just haul that thing around with me. And then I sit down at a table and just get myself organized and just knit, you know, it's just like I sit on the airplane and just like pull the yarn out of that little packing cube and it's perfect. So no, it is because if you put your yarn on a table like that, you don't have to worry about the weight of the yarn pulling your project down. So mm -hmm. that's why people say to use bobbins, but I don't really, I don't consider my in charge of projects, the, the portable ones, right? I mean, uh, you can do it, but it's easier <laughs> to be at home at your table. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Beth. Um, it was lovely to see your, your ferrule. Um, it looks amazing. Thank you for joining us and sharing your tips and your uh, test knitting wisdom. <laughs> thank you All for right. having me. Let me pull everyone back up together here. We're going to bring up Layla and we're going to bring up Florence because we're kind of winding down to the end of our episode here. I have a couple questions for everyone and we're going to go around in the circle. We'll start with Julia and then go to Beth, Sophie, and then Florence and Layla will be last. Two fun questions to ask you. I always end the episode with this. If What is your knitting superpower? We'll start with my Julia Taylor. What do you, what's your knitting superpower, Julia? I haven't really thought about it again. I think I need to repeat myself and say casting on. <laughs> I'm not a fast knitter. I'm not a finisher. I start things. <laughs> it's true. It's true. She starts on lots of projects and you do finish. You, you all. Some, yeah, some I finish. Sometimes it takes me a, a couple of years, but it's fine. I've known you for a long time and you have gone back and finished some older Yes, projects. absolutely. Or my sister finishes it for me. <laughs> <laughs> really I a pay twin. her in yarn. Yeah, and she has a twin sister named Emily and Emily has I, finished um, stuff for you. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes she finishes my projects. <laughs> All right, Beth, what would be your knitting superpower? Well, if I put a positive spin on it, it's perseverance. Uh, less positive would be stubbornness. I love to try new things and I won't give up until I get them, even if I'm driving myself and everyone in my family crazy about it. <laughs> so I think it's this, and uh, yeah, that would be my superpower is I, I just keep trying until I get it. <laughs> oh, that's nice. All right, and... so what about you? for your knitting superpower? I'd say, well, maybe it's not a superpower. I'd say I think I can get things done a lot quicker than, yeah. than I do. So I'm always, I guess, similarly, um, have too many things going all at once and give myself deadlines, which I don't perhaps reach, I guess. So yeah, similar, similarly to you, Julia, too much, too much going on at once, really. We're optimists, right? Yes, <laughs> yes, I like that. That's a great way to say that. <laughs> All right, Florence, what's your knitting superpower? So I would say mine is actually the opposite. And I try to be very, very strict with finishing something and the same way with reading a book. I can't have two books going at the same time. I have to finish something before I start something else. So I try, sometimes I'll have, you know, two, three things on the go, but I do try to be strict. Otherwise I know that nothing will ever get done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What about you, Layla? Um, I, I guess I'm just, uh, I, ju I just, um, I like to use strand size of needles <laughs> what size needles are those oh my god um, 20. <laughs> oh. 20 millimeter um i do have some things bigger than this as well so so i would like to use this sort of a giant size needles to knit lace with yarn so ah i love that spoons. yeah love different that. kind of textures yeah very cool um, my knitting superpower is swatching. I love to swatch. Um, it's very much a key part of my process. I don't even know how many swatches we should count, but I'm sure I have a, a thousand here in my office that I've done at least in the last year and a half or something. And lots that are lost already. 
yeah, things that have just kind of disappeared from moving from studio to studio. But I love to swatch. Um, um, it's just a great way for me to get acquainted with the yarn and the colors and to play. And I got a knitting machine during the pandemic and that made swatching for color really fun too. So I would say swatching is my superpower. <laughs> All right, Julia, if you were a stitch or a knitting technique, which one would you be? I like stocking it in the round. Just knitting, 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 knitting. No break needed. <laughs> Sorry. Make, making myself la uh, laugh. Um, yeah, no no brain power necessary. Just knitting, knitting, knitting. That's my my jam. Okay. Um, what about you, Sophie? I think maybe it would just be the dip stitch. Um, as I think it's so, so wow, it's it's a really nice transition from my weaving work into knitting work. Um, and yeah, so it has those two elements there. Mm. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. What about you, Beth? I guess I'm going to have to pick intarsia because it combines so many of the great things about color work. I mean, you can make this beautiful woven fabric or, you know, a more traditional color work project with it. It seems so versatile. I have to thank Florence for for that answer <laughs> absolutely i agree <laughs> all right florence what about you if you were a stitch or a knitting technique which one would you be um so i will go for stranded knitting just because i think um it's endless with kind of playing around with color and just so many different combinations and patterns and um outcomes can be created so I think it's always fun and always different great and what about you Layla well just basic stitches like knit <laughs> and single crochet in crocheting okay. because I I mean you can just use different size needles and to create different kind of textures so very true yeah it's really functional stitch mm -hmm. stitch sure. is super functional and I guess my favorite technique or stitch would be intarsia. Right now I'm like completely obsessed with intarsia. I just like knit intarsia into everything that I'm knitting. <laughs> so um yeah, so I'm on the same boat with Beth and and it's it's because of Florence, you know, when I just go, <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> and I have another say, one in. <laughs> I have to say the chunky stitch is so fun to knit. I remember when it came in and Julie and I were trying to figure it out for the first time and when we got it we were like whoa yeah I think we're pretty much swatched for every design yes. in the book and this one was one of the most fun I think this swatch. one we swatched the most for though no? yes yeah. we've done lots and lots of different uh, versions because so we needed to try it with different backgrounds as well yeah, yeah definitely well, thank you, you guys for joining me for this conversation around neons and neutrals with Florence Burling and Layla Yang. Um, this is Amy's Knit Lab. And if you like this kind of content, please subscribe. We're going to continue to create this content for you. And um, yeah, it's Friday afternoon here in Paris. So we're almost off for the day. We're going to have the weekend off. So happy knitting, everyone. Happy knitting. Bon Bye. 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 Bye.